Raka Raka Ali, YouTuber, million subscribers. How is that going? It's going okay. Uh, I'm hoping uh, to get to two million sometime in the next uh, 10 years. So we'll see. <laughs> I guess it's going to take much less than that. No. Well, YouTube just deletes the videos and the channel, and then they delete the subscribers too. So it's just a matter of trying to release content faster than they're deleting it. How many lyrics you have written? In this uh, probably like a hundred, like a hundred songs, if I had to estimate. Where where it came from the Raka Raka Ali? Uh, you know, I started making music. I thought it would be a lot of fun to kind of uh, create this larger than life presentation of things and music and ideas and you know over time i just wanted to see how long how much further i can push things and at this point it's uh it's gotten so high it's, it's all about to fall over maybe but as i continue to venture into the world of commentary as i work on projects involving philosophy i think uh i think that's probably going to change uh, ultimately i'm just going to kind of branch out and have like kind of a separate uh sort of persona and you know, and and kind of separate the entertainment brand from the commentary one moving forward at some point. It's it, these things tend to flow naturally. It came with like a, a DJ was the first thing in 2006. DJ Not Nice. That wasn't the first thing, but yeah, one of my earliest songs was uh, Smoke Tree. That was my third, the third song. And it went, nigga pre, everybody in the house smoke tree. I'm Viet Cong. Do I look Chinese? So right from the start, you can see this fascination with all things Oriental. So this was not like some later gimmick I came up with. This was always, always a big part of the real me. It sounds awesome. How we evolved from being a rapper to to become a parody maker? Is that the title we should use? Parody maker? I don't know. It's hard to say anymore. Like I made, I started rapping as it was kind of supposed to be this like funny thing that's like kind of making fun of rap, but also making fun of people that make fun of rap. And then, <laughs> you know, just kind of making fun of the whole situation. And after a couple years of doing that, I made a parody as a project for a radio station where I was interning just because I hoped to play it on the radio. I thought that would be the most exciting thing. So then I put it on YouTube and it like blew up by those by the standards of those days like you know thousands of views was like a big deal to me back then still is a big deal but i mean today it's like you know people they, they post a video and if it doesn't get 25,000 views in the first few minutes they they think it's like a failure <laughs> uh back then like a thousand views a day was like a big deal um so I was like, oh, wow, this is good. All right, I'll make another one like these. And, uh, you know, then th then it kind of became a big part of uh, what I'm known for. But I also uh, always really was into that. Like, I was always doing parodies uh, since early in life. So it wasn't so much. Um, so it's like a kind of a, like natural talent. It's something I've always been into. It's something I've, I've always done. So to kind of uh, integrate that with the rap project that I was doing was a lot of fun because I, I established this irreverent approach and this uh, kind of larger than life persona. Integrating that with this love of parodies meant I could, I could pretty much say anything I want in, in, the, in the form of a, of a song parody and you know, it's uh, it it, it kind of cre it, it paints this whole world. It paints the world a certain way. Was some artist really your star, and who led you to to do this? Something like this? I who, think uh, there were. I think there are influences like old Eminem. I think influenced me when I was young. Uh, I wasn't a very big fan of Weird Al, but like I knew of him, so I think that kind of influenced me a little bit. Other yeah. like other music I heard growing up that was sort of on the funny side, even children's music, I think, tends to be pretty clever because kids, you know, kids, kids have high expectations like it needs to it needs to be kind of decent. It's um, it's like with kids movies, you know, there's like always a hero and there's a story and a resolution. It's not like a lot of adult. Uh, it's not like a lot of movies for adults. I don't mean pornography. I mean, like 
or mm -hmm. really this applies to pornography too. The, the plot is usually is often stupid. There's usually no hero. There's no there's no meaning. There's no uh, journey. But kids have higher expectations. So really, yeah, just anything that was sort of clever lyrically um, that I was that I was exposed to, I think, influenced me. But I've always just been to doing my own thing. So I would say uh, just my own uh, my own development, uh, like even just like reading, um, trying to study as a kid, you know, trying to memorize things. And I would start turning it into a song, like turning it into a tune, <laughs> like trying to memorize every capital in so Europe. Like your brain works through like a melodies. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a great way to memorize stuff. Like I, I know the quadratic f formula because it was taught to me with a tune. X equals negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all divided by 2A. See, I know it because of the tune. And <laughs> maybe someone out there, well, you're Asian. You can probably tell me if I got it wrong. Someone might say, oh, no, actually, it's 4AB, not 4AC. <laughs> So, <laughs> but I think I got it right. When was the first time you made your own first original lyrics? Uh, when I was, I think, well, it's hard to say because I was probably doing it really young. But the first one I remember right now is when I was 12 and I started, um, I thought I thought Slim Shady the first time I heard it I thought he was saying Ramsini like a, like a magician Ramsini so when I found out it was Slim Shady I decided all right well then my name is Ramsini and then I started I, I I stayed up one night in bed like making up this whole like I went my name is Ramsini and I'm married to a whore she gets a lot of business but we're still very poor <laughs> uh, her last name is Sucker and her dad's name is Dick no wonder people call her the daughter of a faggot. So I was, uh, I had a, I had a dirty mouth and I was offensive right from the start. People think, oh, he's just offensive, you know, because he thinks he's it sells. Better. He's, he's offensive because he thinks it's a gimmick. No, it's not a gimmick. This is the real me. I, I, I've been doing this you as like long. As, that. Yeah. You re that is real rocker. This is the real me. Yeah. So, <laughs> so that's what I remember making up. So that that song went on for a few more. Uh, so it was verse. like that, laying down and then popping up the entire lyrics. You did not like it was not like it was sub it like that and not something that you would have to sit and meditate and work on it for weeks. It was more like natural, like it came into your mind like that. I mean, it took focus. I remember like staying up at night and like and like memorizing this thing that I was writing and then like reciting it later. So it took focus. Um, but yeah, it, it was what I enjoyed. I was always a creative writer. I mean, I, you know, anytime there was a creative assignment in English class or whatever, I was always excited to do that. And I always took it seriously and saw what how how good I can make it. I, I wasn't cynical about it, the fact that it was a, a class project and that that's that's nerdy. I was like, no, this is an opportunity. So, uh, yeah, it's it's sort of like, I guess, comes naturally, whatever that means. But um. It wasn't, I mean, but like there, there are writing projects that do take weeks or even years in some cases. I mean, I have a, a song about the Pope living in the Vatican. That one, uh, when that song was popular, uh, Living in the Hall of Fame by whatever their name is, the, the, the band, um, the script maybe, I don't know. Living in the Hall of Fame. I remember coming up like living in the Vatican. Because the Pope was visiting I, at that time, I think he was visiting or he was crowned. The new Pope was was anointed. And I remember and the world's going to know you're gay. But at that time, I thought to myself, like I said, I, I can't write like a full you know, par song parody around with just that. So I so I kind of left it alone. And then a few years later than that, I heard the song the, the Pope was now visiting the U.S. and. And I remembered that idea and I thought to myself like, oh, I could totally write that. So what, what seemed like too big of a task, I suddenly realized like, oh, no, I can definitely do that. I have a new song that I just recorded a couple days ago that's that'll be out. This is an exclusive. The Fanny Show. Is that what your show is called? It's Fanny and I, yeah, my channel. It's All right. pretty it's an ex everything. exclusive. So I wrote the um, I had the idea for a song about the earth being flat and that is an amazing subject it's an amazing subject so i think it, i think this was like eight like seven or eight or nine months ago i had this idea 
and I started writing it. And then I said, all right, this isn't that good. And then I put it away, came back to it a month later, wrote a bit more than said, ah, oh, this isn't that good. You know, over and over, finally, like a month ago, I finally just looked at it with a fresh set of eyes and said, oh, this is going to be great. So I, I, I finished writing it and then, you know, just recorded it and been working on the video. It's like, it makes me laugh, you know, even though I'm the one who wrote it, like watching, <laughs> watching this video that I'm working on, I'm like, this is good stuff. So, I mean, it, it, it can sometimes take weeks or, or, or months or years, maybe decades. Maybe I'll have, maybe I'll, maybe there'll be a project that'll only emerge after a full lifetime 